Today, we are privileged to be able to hear from Dr. Chris Lehman about his work in cancer research. Dr. Lehman has had over 30 years of experience in this field, published numerous articles, is the inventor of numerous drug targeting therapies, and was the recipient of the 2015 American Chemical Society's Award for Cancer Research. He has worked at companies such as Glasgow Smith Klein, Ionis Pharmaceuticals, and for the past 19 years, Indocyte, right here in West Lafayette. Not only is he an award-winning scientist, but he's also Evan's father. Can you wave us to us from the crowd, Evan? Where are you? There he is. revolutionizing precision medicine with the potential to treat many diseases that affect many people. So, please give a big, greater welcome to Dr. Chris Lehman. So this is a different hat that I'm going to wear today outside of coaching. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, cancer research. I know you've done this, or at least reviewed uh, some of the concepts of cancer uh, recently, and uh, for those of you older students probably have seen it a few times. I'm going to try to put it into a different context. It's one thing to learn it in a textbook, to memorize facts and to forget it, or maybe you'll retain a few things if you certainly don't use those facts very often. But what I'm going to try to do is in, in, integrate some of the facts that you just recently learned into what I'm doing and hopefully inspire a few of you, if not all of you, uh, to go into an interesting field like this. So targeting drugs. I first want to introduce this topic. And of course, there we are. Uh, just a few words about cancer in general. Um, if you haven't already experienced this, uh, at some point in your life, you're going to know someone close to you that gets cancer. Cancer is a bad word, but every day that goes by, more and more uh, exciting advancements have occurred that allow people to live longer and in some cases get cured. Uh, there's a fascinating field, which I'm going to end up my talk today, uh, dealing with the immunotherapy, which the immune system in your body is probably the best drug your body will ever have, and I'll, t I'll tell you why towards the end of my talk. But what I wanted to do is spend just a moment telling you about cancer and then segue into what we can do to treat it. So along the way, someone may end up having a tumor. And you'll see this. This can be detected by many ways uh, through CT imaging uh, or whatnot. But generally, a person doesn't feel well, and they go in and get checked out and find out they have cancer. What is interesting, to especially the young, is to understand that cancer is really your own cells. It's your own cells that have lost the ability to control how they divide. I mean, all the cells in our body may divide, except for possibly brain cells. You know, they have to divide from time to time, but they have certain checkpoints that say, okay, you're done dividing, let's move on, uh, or stay quiet for a while. And there's a lot of controls inside of a cell that tells it to do that. Well, when a cell becomes cancerous, these controls are not controlled. There, there's the ability of a cell, one single cell, can then start to multiply and grow and form what we would call a lesion or a small tumor. And these cells will release factors, will release uh, compounds, and those compounds will actually attract this blood cell here to start growing towards it. Why? It's because that tumor needs to be fed. It needs oxygen, it needs nutrients, and that's the, the bloodstream is the supply of those nutrients. And so in time, what you'll see is that that tumor, that tumor, which starts over here, all of a sudden maybe one of these other cells will come out into the bloodstream and go for a little tra uh, travel, 
uh, throughout the body, and then it'll make a right turn and go outside that blood vessel. We'll form another tumor. We call that metastasis. And this is how cancer spreads throughout the body. You're not necessarily, or someone's not necessarily going to die from the cancer cells by themselves. It's what those cancer cells do to the vital organs in your body. They will shut them down because they can't control their rate of divisions. They divide, they divide, they divide, and they overtake. Well, you've probably seen uh, some sort of image that looks like this, where they talk about the different organelles inside of a cell. And again, this is something you'll see in biology. And when I was your age, I didn't know I was going to become a scientist. I really didn't. And I would look at these things. I'd memorize, I'd understand. Um, but then if you don't really put it in context, you may not fully appreciate the value of understanding what this biology is teaching us. And you find out about the different organelles and their function, just picking one out, the mitochondria. Uh, um, a mitochondria produces power for the cell. We know that. But some of these other organelles, you know, you've got uh, Golgi, certainly the nucleus, which houses, houses the DNA. There's lots of key features inside the cell, and that's for the overall survival. But when it comes time to wanting to kill this cell, if this is cancerous, we take a look at this and say, well, all right, to survive, that cell needs to make DNA, it needs to make RNA, it needs to make protein. It has key enzymes that control the metabolism within that cell. Uh, transcription factors, which controls how genes are expressed. You know, not all your genes are expressed at any one time. Some are, some are not. And, and that's under tight control, usually. Sorry for that. Far away. And also, uh, everything that's involved in cell division. So you look at this and say, well, what are good targets to, to inhibit so we can kill that cell? Because that's the goal. We want to kill the cancer. Here we have another uh, image of a cell. And you can see that on the surface, there's proteins. And these proteins, some of them are receptors, some of them are transporters, some of them are just there as tags. But we do know that if this is, for example, a growth factor receptor, if something binds to that receptor, it will trigger a cascade of events. We call this uh, signaling. It will cascade these signals inside the cell to tell it to do something. All right, so if insulin binds to your cell, it will trigger what? Glucose to come in. If, uh, if this one growth factor, called epidermal growth factor receptor, if that binds its ligand, and triggers all this, uh, this communication here from the cell surface to the nucleus, it may tell that cell to divide. And guess what? Cancer, which is derived from your normal cell, has this ability. But whereas your normal cells will do this, or they will be under tight control, this cancer cell will keep growing. So I want to talk to you about what we can do to treat cancer. Because if you see someone that has cancer, and, and actually it's very close to me, I didn't, again, know I was going to be a scientist. Uh, I thought I'd go into medicine just for the hell of it. I didn't really have a goal. But two years into college, Evan's grandmother, who we never met, because she died 17 years before he was even born, um, mother, she died from pancreatic cancer. And she was younger than I am now. It took her life in five months. And when, that's what I said in the beginning, when you understand, you meet people or know people, your family, your friends that get cancer, when they get treated with drugs, most of the drugs do nothing but make the person sick. Maybe they'll live another month, maybe two months, but they have to endure all that toxicity. And that's exactly what I saw uh, when my mother was treated. Lots of toxicity. And in the end, she didn't live very long. So going through that experience, I said, all right, you got a choice. I have a choice. I can do nothing about it except it. Or I can change the course of my life and maybe try to do something about it. So I wanted to uh, share with you a little bit about that. First, I want to contrast and compare what the traditional chemo is to the targeted chemo. And the targeted chemo is really why I'm here. Uh, Non-targeted chemo. If you have an injection, if someone gets an injection, and for this illustration, the drug is red. You inject that, and that drug goes everywhere. It goes into all your tissues. It goes into tissues you don't want that drug in. And chemo is essentially poison. It is meant to kill. So you don't want that in your liver. You don't want it in your kidney. You don't want it in any of your normal tissue if you can help it. Um, you know, this was the early stages of chemo, and so it does go everywhere. And, you know, people lose their hair.